Gav, what are you doing? Em, I'm giving five stars to Pingo Learn, my favourite English pronunciation app. Have any of your learners ever been in a situation where they know English but they're not confident when talking to English speakers or in an unfamiliar environment? Absolutely. My students often feel that way. Well, that's exactly where Pingo Learn can help. It's an incredible English pronunciation app that helps learners master their spoken English. With Pingo Learn, you can access their online library of videos, pronunciation activities with a scoring system, books, and vocabulary games, all in a convenient and fun way. Plus, Pingo Learn also provides detailed feedback on pronunciation, so you can track your progress and get useful guidance and confidently engage in conversations with English speakers. Yes, with Pingo Learn, you'll never be worried about mispronouncing a word or feeling awkward when speaking English in a foreign country. So don't let your lack of confidence stop you. Try Pingo Learn today and start mastering spoken English. Exactly, Gav. That's why I recommend it to all my students. Followers, search for Pingo Learn online or get their app at Google Play or on the App Store. Or follow the link in our show notes. Welcome, everybody. This is How to English Teach and Learn with Gavin M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. Words, M. But not only words, also pronunciation. Specific kinds of pronunciation, Gav. From particular places. And particular people. Are you ready to go down this rabbit hole? I am totally prepared and... I think the followers will find this very interesting as we explore both American English and British English. Come with us on this journey of how to say things. That sounds absolutely delightful, Em. Before we get started, do you have any issues with your students concerning both British and American English? I wouldn't call them issues, no. I think my students are quite curious about that. I think they watch a lot of American TV programs and films, so they pick up a lot of Americanisms. I can see that might influence the way they speak the language. And perhaps if I say something, they may not know the word because they haven't heard it in the British way. Have you found anything noteworthy in your classes about American and British English? I often find myself having to deal with this difference between the British and American English. For example, Em, only yesterday I was eliciting vegetables from my students and one of the students was telling me about this long green vegetable that they often cut up and they might cook somehow. And I said, what's that? And they said, it's zucchini. I said, ah, that's the American name for it. Do you know the British name? And they said, no. I said, oh, it's Em. That would be courgette. Exactly. And I say we use the French word for that particular vegetable. And then later we were talking about a much larger vegetable, which is a purpley black colour, which you can slice and dice and put into all kinds of interesting meals. And my student said, ah, that's an aubergine. I said, oh, that's the British name that you've used for that. You know, the American name. And they said, hmm, I think it's an egg something. Em, do you know what it is? Yeah, yeah, eggplant. Exactly. So there was an interesting case where my student knew both the British name for one vegetable, but the American name for another vegetable. Yeah, that is a good example. And it just shows how mixed up English is. And we know bits and pieces. We have different Englishes from different places. So it's about definitely making students aware of it, I think, and just asking that question. Do you know the other way or a different word? And my students sometimes ask me, is there another word for that? Because they may have heard it somewhere and it's in the back of their mind that that isn't the word I'm using. That's it. They might be talking about the bathroom and they say, I was looking for the faucet and the other students are looking around, hey, what's a faucet? And then you have to explain it was 
And it was a tap. In British English. And wash basin, Gav? Is a sink. And the whole room itself? I mean, do you want to get into that? Uh, not currently, but maybe later. No, I mean the language of that. What would you call it? Excuse me, where's the... Well, if I was on holiday, maybe in the US, I would say, excuse me, where's the washroom? Washroom? I've never heard washroom. What's it called? Wash <laughs> Restroom? Bathroom? Is it not called a washroom? Washroom. I've never heard. I'm not sure. American <laughs> people out there, tell us if you call it a washroom. I don't know if you're right about that, Gav, but... Go back to the British, you're more confident with it. What would you say in the UK? i say the toilet. Yeah, or the loo, maybe. I wouldn't say the bog, because that's far too informal. <gasps> oh, that's almost a bad word. Yeah, so definitely know your English. Shiz. English is, yes. Like know your math. <laughs> math in America and maths in Britain. Um, I think we could go on like this all day, but... Being language teachers, I think we should just play games. Yeah, I'm up for that. That's cool. First game. What should we call it? Pronunciation differences. Does that sound like fun? Oh, that sounds like loads of fun. Gav, how do we play the first game? M, I've written on some cards some words that are pronounced differently in American and British English. And what we'll do is that we'll take turns. We're going to take a card and elicit from the other person the word on the card and check that we know both the British and American pronunciation. Good. Would you like to go first? Yes. Go ahead. Right, I've taken the first card. Gav, something you would look for in a newspaper or online, maybe, if you want to buy a, a car. A new car. Oh. No, if you want to buy a car, what would you be looking for? A good price. No, that's not it. Um... If you owned a company and you want to sell your product, you might want to do something in a newspaper or on TV, maybe, between a... Oh, some kind of promotion. Yeah, another word for promotion. An advertisement. Okay, advertisement. What's the other way to say it? I think I'm using the British pronunciation. You're not, actually. You're using the American advertisement. Am I? Oh. Yes. M, I think this has already shown us the British and American English is mingling. <laughs> yes, it is. Like a good party, you're mingling <laughs> it. So, yeah, advertisement is American. How do British people say it? Advertisement. Yes, exactly. I'm glad I knew both of those pronunciations of both the British and American. And to be honest, I can't remember which is which, but you're right. Advertisement is American English. Advertisement is British. Stress is on a different bit. Yep. Also known as a syllable. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. I've taken a card and the word is, it's an object fired from a base, especially a military base. Torpedo. Goes up in the air. Rocket. Yeah, kind of rocket, but not for space. Maybe during wartime, you might fire one of these. Ah, uh, missile. Very good. Is that the British or American pronunciation? Missile is British. Okay. Do you know the American pronunciation? I can give it a go. I don't think I've ever said it in the American way, but is it missile? It is missile. 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 A bit like mistletoe. Mmm. Or thistle. Or... Whistle. That's very good as well. Yeah. Missile. It's a really contracted sound, isn't it? Really shortened and condensed. Sl. If you were watching the news in America, you would hear missile. If you were watching the news in Britain, it would be missile. That's it. Very different, isn't it? That is very different. Okay. Next one, Gav, is if you wanted to be healthy and your diet wasn't giving you enough of what you needed. Roughage. No, <laughs> no. You might take something that is in a little bottle or... A supplement. Yes, another word for supplement. Minerals? No. Vegetables? More, more common than, no. Vegetables, no. Vitamins? Yes. Vitamins. Now, I also know the American pronunciation because it's vitamins. That's right. That is very often talked about in TV programs and on news. Get your vitamins or vitamins. M, just to break away for a second, what would you do if your student said, I take lots of vitamins? Would you say, hold on a minute, 
You need to say vitamins because this is a British English lesson today. No, no, of course not. No, I would say, oh, which ones do you take? And you wouldn't take which vitamins do you take? No, they've already said it, so that's fine. Mm. What if the other students start pronouncing it differently? Do you then say, group, this is a really good opportunity for us to talk about the differences between British and American English? I would only do that if people were looking confused and maybe then I would say we're talking about vitamins or also pronounced vitamins if you're American. So maybe that would be a good point to emphasise it if not everybody was catching the word. So yeah, I do see that it might be worth pointing that out. Some clarification could be useful, especially if the pronunciation, for example, missile and missile, Mm. they sound quite different, but maybe vitamin and vitamin, that's not such an issue. Exactly. Your turn. This word is used when organising your time. It's a synonym for timetable. And in British English, it also has two pronunciations. Does it really? And it's often argued over. You mean in Britain they use the American pronunciation? I'd say in Britain we use both the British and the American pronunciation. Right. I know what it is and I really can't remember which one is which because it is so mixed up. So it's schedule or schedule. According to dictionary.com, where they discuss this topic, British English versus American English, they say that schedule is American Mm. and schedule is British. That's what I thought, but I never remember it. And it doesn't matter, does it, really? I'm agreeing with you, Em. And they also say in the article, not only schedule, but also schedule. So, in fact, there are three. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's right, Gav. You mean British people say schedule? Well, it says schedule. All. Schedule. Schedule. Let me check my... <laughs> Let me check my schedule. <laughs> I don't know about that. Not so common, that one. Em, um, you did guess the word, so you get a point for that, so congrats. What one do you use? Now I'm thinking about it, I just don't know. I think I say schedule. Yeah, I, th- I think I do. But I think I say schedule sometimes. Do you? Okay. Yeah. I think I've really got used to saying the American pronunciation. Eh, maybe it doesn't matter, but it is good to know both of them. Yes, it is. Do you want to do one more? One more. Last one. Oh, okay. This is a good one because I never knew this, actually. This is actually a French word and it's a military ranking. And I'm not sure if it's the spelling or just pronunciation that's different. I think it's just the pronunciation, but it sounds like a very different word. Well, we're doing a pronunciation activity, so I'm guessing the word is spelt exactly the same, M. That's true, Gav. So, yes, it's a rank in the military. I don't know. Columbo. Do you know Columbo, the detective? Oh, yeah. My favourite detective. He was this rank. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. But they never called him that. They only called him that in one episode, and that was when he went to London. Oh, in that case, they called him Lieutenant. That's right. And I never understood when I watched Columbo, why are they calling him Lieutenant? But how can Lieutenant and Lieutenant be spelt the same? It's so weird. That is a mystery. But one, maybe we don't have to deal with in this episode, Em. That's right, Gav. We're only here to tell you how it sounds. So yes, just listen out for that if you like crime dramas. Are they saying Lieutenant or Lieutenant? Or perhaps you're watching a military procession. Yeah. For more fantastic pronunciation practice, visit EspressoEnglish.net, where Shania has written an amazing article. It's called British English versus American English Pronunciation. And she looks at some of the differences between similar sounding words. Check out my British pronunciation, M. Let's hear your American. I'll do my best, Gav. For example, I'll say agile. You'll say. Agile. I'll say fertile. You say? Fertile. I say hostile. Hostile. Mobile. Mobile. Versatile. Versatile. Hard. Hard. Were. I don't know. Were. 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 Ear. Ear. Bar. Bar. 
How do you spell that word? B-A-R. Yeah, you wouldn't know that from the British pronunciation, would you? The R is completely dropped. So it's a hard R in American English. That's it. Gav, I've noticed with some recordings in books that there is American English, British English often, and there are some words that are pronounced differently. And a lot of the time that is the T sound in the middle of a word. For example, duty, Gav. How would some American people say that? I think it's more of a d sound. So I could try saying duty. Yeah, it's a very soft T sound. One more time. Duty. Okay. Better. Better. Water. Water. Hated. Hated. Writing. Riding. Bottom. Bottom. Notice. Notice. That's it. And I think some British people do it too. Definitely with water, depending on where you're from. Some people just don't use tea in any way. They just say water. Water. So that's a regional accent. There's me adding tea to everything. Yes, I do sometimes drop my teas, Gav. I certainly do too. As you said, between different regions of the UK as well. As you'll find in the US, the accent will be very different. Pronunciation will be very different. Letters will be stressed or dropped depending on the region. And it's worth letting your students know that if they don't recognise a word, it might be because of the T sound. So just make them aware of it. Maybe it's a D sound. Maybe it's just not there at all. So another tip for you. And what about the spelling difference between British and American English? Because there are some letters that are often removed or switched. Yes, Kev. There are a lot more U's in British English. Do you want to give me an example? We like U's. I like you too, Em. (laughs) (laughs) Like colour? How do you spell colour? C-O-L-O-R. You spell it like that? Uh, That's the American spelling. No, I said how do you spell colour? Well, it depends if I'm writing American English or British English. Do you switch sometimes? I do sometimes in the transcriptions for the show. Ah, really? Mm. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. So in British English, it would be... C-O-L-O-U-R. Good. Yeah. And it's the same with honour. H-O-N-O-U-R in British English and H-O-N-O-R in American English. According to Babel.com, it was all thanks to a man whose name you've most definitely heard, Noah Webster. Ah, the dictionary guy. That's it. Webster wanted to make American English more distinct in order to take control of the language from the British. In his earliest dictionaries, he removed the extra U from words and switched R-E to E-R at the end of words like... Gav, can you tell me? Like centre, theatre, December... Not that one. That one would be the French. But yes, like theatre, centre, metre. Yeah. So that's the reason. Very interesting factoid, Em. You have been doing your research. I think we've got time for one more game, Gav. I was banking on it, Em. Right. This time, you have a list of words. I have a list of words. I'm going to send you a Google Doc. Em, before we play this game, how can my students benefit from this? It's a fun way to practice a little bit of role play as well, and it will highlight the differences between American and British English. And therefore... Expand knowledge, grow vocabulary. And have a bit of fun. And have a bit of fun. So yes, as I said, you've got a list of words. Your words are British words. My words are American words. We have different words. We need to have a conversation. And within that conversation... Use the words on our page. Right. I'm looking at five different words. Now, you say these are different words. These are not the British equivalent of your words. No, no. You've got your own group of words. They're not equivalents, Gav. You've got your own words. I've got my own words. As we're talking, Gav, if you hear a word that you think is different in British English, you need to stop me and you need to say the British equivalent. What do I shout, Em? Stop. And I'm not correcting you. I'm not saying, M, this English you're using is incorrect. I'm just saying maybe there's another way of saying it in another region of the world. That's right, Gav, because it isn't wrong. It's just different. So it would be like two people having a conversation from different places and just confirming, clarifying, checking what the other is talking about. 
So we need a topic for this conversation. Can you think of a good topic? I think we should talk about my neighbourhood. Right, your neighbourhood. Your neighbourhood. Uh, my neighbourhood. <laughs> Do I know your neighbourhood? I think we should talk about our neighbourhoods. Good idea. I like it. Um, I'm looking at my list of words and I have no idea how I'm going to fit these into a discussion on my neighbourhood. But let's begin anyway. Um, did you know I live down a cul-de-sac? No, I didn't know that, Gav. Hang on a second. Um, stop, Gav. Stop. Cul-de-sac. Do you mean Dead End Street? I do mean a Dead End Street, which is also known as a cul-de-sac in the UK. Now, this cul-de-sac is a very friendly, quiet little place with only a few houses down there. And I was walking out of my home, down the road, and you would not believe what I saw on the floor. There was a baby's dummy. Stop, Gav, stop. Dummy? Is that the same as pacifier? In America, you are quite right. That is a pacifier. But for me, it was a dummy. Now, I looked at the dummy and thought, oh, I don't know what to do. And then it occurred to me, I should put it in the dustbin. Wait, stop. Trash can, I think, in American? Trash can. Okay, so you put the pacifier in the trash can? Are you sure you didn't put it into a mailbox? Uh, stop. Is that a post box? Yeah. And why on earth would I do that, Em? I thought maybe it would make its way back to the baby. <laughs> but you'd need to put the zip code on it. The zip code... Stop. Is the postcode. Yeah, you'd need to write the address and the postcode. And postcode is those letters and numbers that go at the end of the address to make sure it arrives at your block of flats, for example. Your, um, stop, your apartment block. Yeah. So I guess you didn't have that information if you just found the pacifier on the ground. I wouldn't know who to send it to. I would have to go to at least the estate agent and ask them. Uh, what... Stop, stop. Uh, real estate agent? The real estate agent is also the estate agent. You are quite correct. And then you could mail it. Post. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop post. Post. Post it. You say post it in Britain. We do. Okay. So and you could mail it if you went to the real estate agent to get the zip code. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> em, we've done our five words. I haven't done my five words, but I think I need to learn some math to know all my... Stop fun. maths. Okay, I need to learn some maths, if, as you say in the UK, because I think I'm still missing one. I haven't actually included... Because I couldn't think of how to include the word. Um, maybe I would give that baby my allowance for the week so that... Uh, it... Stop. Allowance is pocket money. Ah, okay. So I would give that baby my allowance for the week so it could buy a new pacifier. A new... Oh, stop. A... Uh... A new dummy with their pocket money. And we need to change the topic. What would you like to do the next five words with? Supermarket, Gav. I'd like to talk about the supermarket, okay? I'm going to have a look. I've got five words here. Yes. All right, would you like to begin? I'm going to begin. I was watching a movie the other day. Stop. I think, frankly, movie is fine, but I guess you want me to say film. Uh-huh, okay. I was watching a movie and I got the munchies. The munchies. I got the munchies. I'm making you doubt this now. I think Americans say munchies. Munchies is when you get really hungry and you need to just fill your mouth with lovely sweets and biscuits and crisps. Yeah. Wait a minute. That was my word. Stop. Not crisps. I was going to say chips. Oh, that wasn't one of my words. So I wanted some chips and also I really fancied some cookies. Cookies? And Again, I can have cookies in the UK, I could have cookies in the US, but I might want to say biscuits in the UK. Right. Em, I think a much better snack for your munchies would be some sweet corn. Sweet corn? Uh, you, mm, I think... It's I a healthy alternative. Maize, and Gav, maize, stop I, there. I didn't hear maize, the stop word. Hold. Maize. <laughs> yeah, I don't really like maize for... That kind of snack. Is it because it makes you go to the toilet? Oh, no, Gav. No, let's not go down that road. Anyway, stop. Bathroom, restroom. No, it doesn't make me go to the bathroom. I just don't like it. Coming back to cookies. I wanted the cookies that are, you know, the ones that are like a sandwich with the jelly in the middle. I really J like... Stop. Jam. Ah, okay. So I like the ones with the jelly in the middle. I don't know what type of biscuit that is, but it... 
sounds like something I might have in my trousers. What <laughs> are you talking about? I often keep my snacks in my trousers. <laughs> Stop there. You keep <laughs> your snacks in your pants? <laughs> I certainly do not. Why is... My underpants. Oh, wow. We've gone really weird now. So you're saying pants meaning trousers? No, I said trousers meaning pants. <laughs> but pants you think are... But not pants meaning underpants. Underpants. Your shorts. I'm not wearing shorts today, Em. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. One thing I like to have with my snacks is a nice glass of lemonade. And do you know where I put my lemonade, Em? In a glass. No, it's in a jug. Is it? Oh, wait, stop. You said jug. I think Americans say pitcher. Yeah, if they're not saying jug, they might be saying pitcher. Pitcher, yes. In the end, I just ordered online and I got some French fries from the local takeaway which restaurant. Which is, stop, which is also absolutely fine, but I guess you want me to say chips. Yeah, but chips are different to French fries. French fries are little skinny ones, aren't they? You get from fast food places. Yeah, so I did actually get French fries. You're thinking fish and chips, like chips. Chip chips, big chips. Chip chips, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's enough, Gav. I think our, our followers are sufficiently confused was that five words then i think that was five well done to both of us and that was an awfully fun activity it was awful <laughs> <laughs> but quite fun <laughs> em what's our word of the week i don't know gav do you know what is it it must be your turn i haven't planned it i must admit i'm sorry what about equivalent Equivalent. We looked at lots of equivalents today between British and American English having the same meaning, but maybe a different word or a different pronunciation with that same word. We haven't done the jingle. In that case, Em, we have to say... Learn a word! So, our first definition would be equal in value, amount, function, meaning, etc. Which I think we covered, although you could say... $10 is not equivalent to £10. I was getting there, to be honest with you. But yes, yes, you're right. It's not equivalent. So it's not equal to, it's not equal in value, and it's not the same. And also equivalent may talk about function. This tool may have the same function as another tool. So a speaking activity may function in the same way as one of our pronunciation games. So you mean they have equal value? That is correct. It's worth remembering always preposition to, equivalent to, or not equivalent to. Or different from, if we want to say the opposite. Yeah, the same as, synonymous with. Ah, equivalent may also refer to having the same or similar effect as. Maybe one more would be comparable to. So a good treat of a chocolate bar is equivalent to. A bag of chips, candy bar, crisps, whatever you want to use. It's fine. But they're all nice. And, and we're not even going to go into the equivalent equations in mathematics or math. <laughs> this is how to English, not how to math. And then let's not forget, if anybody wants to buy us a cup of joe, then please visit our ko fi forward slash how to English pod one word and they can send us a lovely cup of joe so on that note Gav I'm going to wave goodbye and I hope there are some followers across the pond that are waving back that is a lovely picture but um, this is a podcast nobody can see you waving that's true Gav <laughs> <laughs>